everybody and welcome to Outdoor Adventures Live. Wow, we have a full house full of VIPs here tonight. I'm loving it. So if this is anybody's first time, what this is is basically a chat with the hiking community. We talk about everything, backpacking, hiking, camping, and especially my favorite, gear talk. First off, if you'd like to be notified when I go live and all my other future videos, I know some people were asking, well, how do I know that you go live? You can do one of two things. You can, actually, you can do both of them if you'd like. You can check the community tab on the channel, or if you're a subscriber, you can simply click on that little box right here with the bell. And that'll email you and let you know every time that I go live, it'll actually send you a notification. So with that, let's get right into the questions. And hello to everybody. I'm glad to see there's 67 people in here right now and Tim Watson outdoors restless outland Gucci girl and grumpy Awesome all things outdoors everybody's in here. So let's have a good night uh, We made a couple changes since last time we actually have some moderators in here So we don't get the trolls if trolls do happen to come in here, please don't feed them anyway Let's go right into the question CC coder Oh, and also let me know, I just got a new mic, so let me know that my audio is working and sounds proper if I'm too loud. I'm still getting the adjustments down. Okay, so CC Coder. Would I ever consider hiking the AT southbound? Um, you know, I, I'd really want to hike it northbound, you know, start at Springer and end in Katahdin if I end up doing that. You know, southbound, I don't know, it, it seems like you see you know, your greatest view, your hardest mountain right at the end or right at the start of the trip. I'd rather see it at the end. That's just me though. But there are plenty of southbound hikers out there. Uh, Hamster King 2558. Red River Gorge video soon. Yes, it's actually going to be out tomorrow at 8 p.m. I'm trying to release one video a week. And that actually gives me time to edit these trip videos so they're not just kind of thrown out. I want to get a little bit better at editing, a little bit better at filming, and you know, it just it just makes me not have to hurry up. Okay. Uh, just just in K P A. I hope that's right. <laughs> um, what's up with this crazy weather? Go home winter. I know. It, it snowed the other day. I woke up. Luckily I worked from home. No, I didn't even work from home. I actually went into work that day and there was like a foot of snow on the ground and it was, I was wearing short sleeves and shorts the day before. It's just absolutely crazy. I, I don't, I don't understand. I, I hope uh, that was it. I hope we don't get another, you know, snowstorm, but Hey, you never know with this, this weather, global warming, I guess. I don't know. Hey, we got, looks, we got like, we got, excuse me, looks like we have Bryce Newbold in here too, another YouTuber. Cool. Hello from Alabama. Restless is cuddling with a hot cocoa and frozen. Nice. <laughs> okay, Bob Watkins. Looking for a good camera to start filming in Ohio. Haven't found any good channels yet. Saw your gear list, but which one would you start with? Uh, which camera would I start with? Probably the one that I have now. It's the, uh, the Sony CX405. It's very affordable. Um, and it, it, you know, it does 1080p, 30 frames per second. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a handy cam. It, the batteries are great. It's been working out fantastic and you have the screen on it for you. Uh, pretty good audio, but excellent video. I still like it. Um, if you want something more rugged, waterproof, I would go with the Hero 5 or I think the Hero 6 Black is out now. Uh, that's a little on the pricier side, so. Where's the poop trials? <laughs> uh, what's with this 16 beat loop on repeat? That is actually a, a, a song that I made. Uh, I like to use my own music on the channel. So, uh, it, you know, I, I just threw that in. I, wanted, I wish I could make it longer, but I think it would get really, really boring. <laughs> Let's see. If you can't go on, will you take over for him? If Gary can't go on, will you take over for him? No, I'm definitely going to be hiking my, my own hike. Uh, actually, speaking of Gary, he finally made it to Virginia. 
And I don't even mean finally. Like he is, he is way ahead of the pack. He's going strong. I think I figured it out. And he's averaging, I think, 17 to 18 miles a day. That's, you know, daily mileage, including him staying at hostels and resupplying. So he's about 25% of the way done. And he is doing fantastic. So all things outdoors. How do I like my new hammock? So recently I purchased a Dream Hammock Darien. You're going to see in the next trip uh, tomorrow that I had sort of a little mishap with it. Um, it's fixed. It's fixed now. But uh, it was my fault. I was cur cursing myself up a storm on the trail. And uh, <laughs> the long story short, uh, it's really, really good. I did make some modifications. Uh, when I go, actually, I'm ready to go on my next trip. I'm all packed up. I don't know if you guys can see the backpack over here. Um, on the next trip, I'm going to get a, a look. I'll show you some of the modifications I made. I didn't like the pullouts on the Dream Hammock. Um, I, I feel like I need them so the bug net stays off of my face. But I changed the shock cord a little bit. And you'll see what I'm talking about during that video. But in all honesty, the Dream Hammock worked out, worked out great. Other than me uh, screwing it up my first trip out. But <laughs> yeah, it worked out pretty good. Okay, so all things outdoors, or uh, excuse me, Justin KPA, how are your ultra shoes? Ha, huh, I love them. Absolutely love them. They have like solved a lot of my IT band issues. They really have. And what's interesting, now we're gonna see after I kick up my mileage, you know, I'm still in the winter mileage doing 12 to you know 17 miles, but when we start doing 20s, uh, you know, over multiple days, the, uh, my heel ends up really hurting in the La Sportiva Wildcats. And I just thought that I had some kind of uh, bone spur or there's a word for it. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, but it, that's gone right now. I, um, in the Red River Gorge, I did about 21 miles the one day, which you'll see, you'll see it tomorrow at, at uh, I think it's 8 o'clock that I'm releasing it. I'll actually be on the road uh, driving down to the next trip. But you'll see what I'm talking about here with uh, the, the mileage. And it's interesting how my foot is striking the ground. No longer am I my heel to toeing, but I'm actually striking it flat, which I think is helping me a lot. So I love the Altras. I, I think they're fantastic. <laughs> Tim is ready, readying his moderator powers. All right. He's, ba he's about to enter the Oasis. Okay, glad to hear that the audio is fine. Um, I'll have to look at the, uh, I'll comment below all things outdoors. I, I can't remember what I got. Tim recommended it to me, kind of. I can't wait till the Red River Gorge video going this weekend. Yeah, it's, uh, hopefully you have a little bit better weather than we experienced down there, but man. How long can I stay on the trail before I need civilization? That's a good question. Um, it depends. If I'm getting resupplied by someone, I could stay out there a very, very long time. Um, you know, if not, I'd say probably every four to five days, I'd want to go into town and pick up some food. Um, I don't, I, I like being around people, but I also don't mind being by myself. Uh, so, yeah, I think I can stay out there pretty long. When I start talking to myself, that's when I'll go into town. Hey, welcome, SB Outdoors. <laughs> the, uh, I was commenting on the Restless Outdoors video skit. If you haven't seen this video, I guess a lot of YouTubers went to Mohican State Park uh, last weekend, two weekends ago. And they did a skit making fun of mainly Tim. Uh, it's really funny. Go check out it on go check it out on Restless Outdoors channel. But I also made a little cameo and got made fun of for my height, which I died laughing. I didn't expect it. It came out of left field, and I commented on a Restless Outdoors video of how much I enjoyed that. So, and I know it's all in fun. Maybe I'll get them back one day. <laughs> Uh, anyway, let's, uh, we're probably a little bit behind here, so 
Let's see. Oh, and by the way, guys, if I missed your question, I'm not ignoring you on purpose. It's just sometimes this chat bounces around. Okay, we have a question. Advantages over hiking poles over just one hiking pole. Well, you know, some people hike with hiking staffs. Um, I know the uh, owner of z -Packs does, whenever he does his videos, he prefers the staff. Um, but for me, you know, just carrying one stick in the woods and try to, you know, finagle with that or, you know, having one hiking pole and walking my dog with the other hand, you know, holding the leash, I can't do, I don't, I feel like I don't have stability enough for one hiking pole. I'd like to, especially going down hills or up hills, you can really dig into the ground and push yourself or stop yourself from rolling down the hill. So I don't know. I, I think it's your own personal preference. You'll have to try, start with one and, you know, see if you like it. Let's see. Shane Shin, have you had any issues with downshifting too much or cold spots with the Revolt under quilts? You know, it, it's, uh, it's funny you bring this up. When I first got my quilts from Enlightened Equipment, he's talking about the Enlightened Equipment Revolt. Uh, I didn't have any problems with cold spots whatsoever. Now, recently as of actually this year, when it gets down to about the lower limit, so I have a 30 degree full length under quilt, under quilt. When it gets down to like 33, 34, 31, yeah, I'm starting to get cold spots right in my lower back. So what I usually do is I have a, a Dutchwear gear sit pad and I throw it behind my back but I don't know if it's the downshifting. I don't know if I maybe need to wash my underquilt. I can't see needing to really ever wash an underquilt. I mean, that means that my sweat has gone through the hammock, has gone through the first layer of fabric on the underquilt, and then has soaked into the down. Um, I, I think it's a migration issue because of their baffle systems, and I'm starting not to like the quilted pattern on Enlightened Equipment's underquilts. Um, even their, their top quilts, they have a baffle system. And when I washed my top quilt, oh my goodness, the, the baffles were so annoying because it was this tiny little baffle like this and you had to pull the down from inside the fabric to get it in the middle of the underquilt. All my, all my down migrated to the outside of the quilt and it was really annoying. So I know I went off on a little bit of a tangent there, uh, but yes, it, it is seeming to become a more of a, more of an issue. Now, I have a Hammock Gear Phoenix, and I don't believe it has you know, baffles. I think the baffles are sewn, sewn through, so the down can't migrate everywhere. Could be wrong, but I haven't found any holes that I could pull the down through yet. And that's been working fine. However, I've only used that under quilt for about a year now, maybe even less. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, man, you were right about Minister Creek Trail not being very well marked. Yeah, try doing it in the winter. I mean, maybe you did do it in the winter. They have the white diamonds on the trees and then white snow falls on top of the diamonds. They're stolen all the time. Yeah, it, it can be a, a pretty tricky trail, especially in, you know, rainy weather where, you know, you have runoff and everything looks like a trail. Hero 6 is the bomb. Yeah, you know what? I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with Hero 5. Like really happy with it. And you know, I can I don't know what they actually did in the 6, but if they made improvements to the 5, that's amazing. Ever hiked in or around Indiana? If so, what trails would you recommend? I have not hiked in Indiana. I probably should migrate farther out and do some new trails, which we're going to do. I'm going to be up north this year a lot, hopefully a lot. Um, so maybe I'll have to check that out. I don't know if it's going to happen this year or next year, but I will definitely get down there somewhere new at some point. Adam Z Adventures, hiking Oil Creek, parking at Rin Farm. Let me make sure. Okay, Rin Farm. How do you... Oh. <clears throat> Which way would you recommend through hiking? Thinking of doing it in the fall. Um, I like I like going 
Yeah, I'm trying to remember which ways I've gone. I think I've gone both. I like going clock now. See, I don't know. I like going both ways, to be honest. But I think the best way uh, is to go counterclockwise. I think that might be a little bit better. Um, it, it honestly just depends. I mean, it's, it's the same mileage either way. Uh, but would I recommend doing the west side or east side the first day? So the east side is, in my opinion, the easier side until you get north. Um, you have to look at it almost from a north-south because the, the north side, I think, is the harder part of this. Uh, the south side isn't too bad. But I'm going off on, on a tangent. I actually miss Little Creek. Maybe I'll go up there again. But uh, I think the west side, if I'm going to compare those two, is probably the harder one. And I would do it toward the end of the trip when your weight's lower. Anyway, Tim asked, have I ever washed my down quilt? We went into that. Do you, how do you know when you have to wash it? Um, <clears throat> they said to go by weight once it weighs a couple ounces, maybe two or three ounces more than when you bought it. So, you know, weigh it when you buy it. And as your sweat is absorbed, it'll actually weigh a little bit more. Um, when you wash it, all that oil, use Nick wax or whatever you're going to use, all that oil comes out and it, it weighed pretty much the same when I first bought it. So I'm assuming it worked. It was just a terrible down migration. Hey, Meerkat, what's going on, man? Laurel Highlands Trail, which way would I recommend through hiking? Thinking of doing it in the fall. I would definitely recommend doing it from Johnstown to a high pile. Uh, Johnstown starts out pretty easy after you get up that, that first climb you're, when you're on top of the ridge. And then it's pretty much smooth sailing until you get to around the Seven Springs area and into the Ohio Pile area a day or so after that. So yes, I would recommend going south. Gary is a beast. Yeah, I, Gary's gonna make it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, how many miles do you hike per day? Um, I see. Okay. So I'm, I'm a little, I think different than some people. I don't really like camping. I mean, I mean, I do, but not as much as I like hiking. My mileage doesn't matter to me as much as some people do. Like I don't try to do big miles. Um, and when I say big miles, I'm talking about anything over 20 miles is, is in my opinion, big. I try to see as much of the area as possible. And by doing that, that sometimes forces me to do 20 miles or more a day. Now, I would never do over 25 miles, I think, in a day, unless I was super conditioned, maybe even on the AT at some point uh, here. But, you know, I try to go between 17 and 20 miles a day in an area so I can see everything I can see. I mean, think about it. Some of these trips I'm driving seven, eight, nine hours to see. I'm not gonna just go down and do a, a four mile loop and then come home. I, I need to, like for the Smokies for instance, I think I did 16, 20, 22, and then 12 out or something. That's, some people say that's crazy. And yeah, I would tend to agree with you, but you know, once you beat up your feet, it really, doesn't feel like that long of a mileage. And you know, once you, especially if you're a light uh, backpacker, you know, my base weight went from 31 or 26 pounds, wherever I was when I first started, all the way down to 9.4 pounds, I think I'm at. Uh, and that's for everything, you know, minus consumables, food and water and fuel. So, you know, I try to do, like I said, 18 or 16 to 20, to 20 miles a day, but you know, I don't recommend telling people to do that. Anyway, I got a little off topic. I'm, I'm in a talkative mood tonight. I don't know why. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, let's see. Did you? <laughs> I like that. Jason, I found my own frontier. Uh, my own frontier is an awesome YouTube channel. Please check it out. Uh, it's amazing. Lots of off trail work. Uh, from your stream and that guy has the most numerous and diverse trip videos you should plug him again yes my own frontier if you are into beautiful scenery great filming great editing 
off trail hiking, bushwhacking, not bushcrafting, but bushwhacking, check out my own frontier. And he's just shooting up in the views. He's amazing. Dwayne Gaston asked if we saw Whiskey Run again. No, but you know what? We were looking for it. And I know Meerkat was hoping we'd find it too. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Gary has not had his shirt off yet. I, I told him I'm very disappointed in him. How long can anyone realistically stay on the trail before you need a hot meal and shower? Um, you know, it depends. I think he's stopping into town every four or five days. You know, I think to stay clean, to keep your hygiene up, you're going to want to do that. I mean, I wouldn't try to pull out a week with no shower. That's just gross. Um, I know on the Superior Hiking Trail, he's, Gary went seven days and he just, ugh, he was terrible. Smelling terrible. And he just didn't feel good. As soon as he hit that shower, he said he felt like a new man. So, yeah. <clears throat> Nico Kane. Think Gary will catch up with Scoutmaster. I'm following Scoutmaster on the AT as well. Um, I don't know. Maybe at some point. I don't know. Gary's um, a little bit injured. I don't know. For those of you that aren't following Gary, Gary is my hiking buddy. Um, he did, started the AT February 25th. He just hit Virginia, about 25% of the way done. But he has a very, very minor injury, uh, something like shin splints or something. Uh, I think he called it perennial tendonitis. And, uh, you know, he's taking it easy right now. He's still taking it easy, but I think it's almost worked out where he's going to pick his mileage back up. So maybe it might be in the cards for him. We'll see. I know he did pass Amanda Best, though. He, he said he saw her and hikeification he's passed. And I'm not sure if he passed sleeves or not. I can't remember. I don't know if sleeves was on there or not. Uh, Frozen, will you try to beat Gary's pace when you attempt the AT, or will you go at your own laser? Uh, <laughs> if I do the AT, I'm not set out to break any records. I'm just going to really enjoy the hike and get done when I can. Um, I'm going to go probably a little bit faster than your average AT through hiker, as long as my health and my hygiene stay high. And that's if, we're talking about if this happens. Um, but yeah, I'll just, you know, hike your own hike kind of thing. Oh, did he do the Pinhoti Trail? Oh, that was cool. I should, I'm should. i going to check that out. Greg Fowler, hey, do you think it would be easier to switch to a canister stove with how light the BRS stoves are? So the BRS stove is a titanium Chinese stove, and it's about... See, I got mine for like 7 bucks, but it's been, it's been up to 15 20 bucks recently. It weighs under an ounce. I think it's like 0.9 or 0.8 ounces. Um, I have tried to switch to the, the BS, the BRS stove, Greg. Um, but I still like my alcohol stoves. In fact, I'm, I used a BRS stove on the Red River Gorge trip. That's going to drop on actually tomorrow at 8 PM, but I really didn't like it. Uh, I don't know. I just don't like canisters. What do I do for work? I always wonder these things about YouTube people. So we covered this in a, in a previous QA, but what I do is I do a lot of, um, I'm in the IT field, first of all, and I do a lot of server work, uh, behind the scenes, networking, uh, backend stuff. So it, it's sometimes it's really time consuming, but I, I, I get paid pretty good. Um, work is really lenient and I'm hoping that they might let me take a leave of absence next year for an undisclosed trail. We'll find out in May. For methane question, do you just air dry? Um, <clears throat> most of the time, yes, I will let it air dry in the sun or you know in the shade with the wind blowing. If I'm in a hurry, like I was today because I forgot to spray my clothes and I'm leaving for a trip tomorrow, I will put it on air fluff in the dryer. Now I'm not sure if that screws up the permethrin at all. It might weaken it a little bit, but you know, I, just to get something on there and not have my clothes soaking wet. I haven't done any research in that, but I have done just you know air dry before, in, in the dryer, I mean. 
Jen Larkin, did I see Ready Player One? Yes, and I, I won't give any spoilers. So you don't have to shut your ears. You don't have to earmuffs. But uh, I like the book way better. I thought the screenplay was acceptable. I did think it was a bit rushed. If you're going into See Ready Player One, if you haven't seen it, and why we're talking about this is it's one of my favorite books that I listened to on the trail. I've actually listened to it four times and I bought the book. Uh, it was amazing. I really, really enjoyed these, the storyline and Will Wheaton did a killer job at narrating it on the audiobook. But if you're going into Ready Player One, keep an open mind. It does not follow the book, but I think they did an acceptable job at adapting it to a screenplay. I just wish they wouldn't have rushed it so much. A little more character building would have been great. And I didn't really like the first quest, but I'm not going to give any spoilers. Thomas Bram, going on my first overnight backpacking trip next weekend. I watched a lot of your videos to prepare. Thank you. You are so welcome, Thomas. I'm glad I could help. Would I recommend Dolly Sods for smaller children? Do you see any families out there? I personally have not. Um, Dolly Sods can be a bit wet, a bit rocky. Um, I mean, if we're talking about, you know, seven, eight-year-olds... I'd keep them at home. If we're talking about, you know, 12, 14 year olds, then yeah, I think they shouldn't have a problem with it. But for smaller children, I don't know. Personally, I wouldn't bring someone, I wouldn't bring a small child to the Dolly Sods. Um, unless you're doing, you know, maybe a, a, a very short hike. But hey, that's just me. Maybe other people in the chat can chime in. Uh, adventures found. I'm 6'3 and 250 pounds. Is there an affordable option in a hammock for my height? And I'm a side sleeper. Yeah, the, <clears throat> the first off, don't look at Eno because that's definitely not going to work for you. Uh, you want probably at 6'3, you either want a really long, a really wide 10 footer or you want an 11 footer. Uh, probably an 11 foot hammock is going to be good for you. Uh, War bonnet. Dream Hammock, uh, Warbonnet Blackbird XLC, Dream Hammock Darien, Raven. They make a whole bunch of stuff. I would email, um, like I just got a Dream Hammock. I like it. Uh, I don't really have any issues with it. Um, but there, there are certain fabrics that can accommodate up to 6'3 and 250. It's not a big deal. It really isn't, actually. Uh, the Warbonnet XLC, I think, can support up to 300 and 50, 340 pounds in their heaviest model. So there's a lot of hammocks out there. Just check out Dream Hammock. Uh, check out War Bonnet. You might want to check out Dutchware's Chameleon too. I can't remember what fabrics he offers, but that might work for you as well. This might be a question for you and Meerkat. Arc Hall versus Arc Blast. Is there a noticeable difference in size, durability, water, Water resistance, trying to figure out which of the two I would like to purchase. Uh, maybe Meerkat can chime in with that one. I, I don't have a problem with either one. Um, <clears throat> I have a Cuban fiber, uh, which the Arc Blast is Cuban fiber. The Arc Hall is grid stop. The Cuban fiber uh, is really, really, really almost near waterproof. You know, you might after, oh, you know, after some wear and tear, you might get some water in the stitching, but it's, it's really good if you want full waterproofness. The Arc Hall, super water resistant. The only way that thing's going to get wet is if you're just getting dumped on for like, you know, 12 hours straight, which is the only time that I've ever had any problems with water resistant or water uh, getting in my pack. And I think I actually set it down in a puddle. So... Uh, it can get through, but you know, I have a Cuban fiber Z Pax Nero and it's been great. I don't have a problem with either fabric. They're, uh, I think a lot of people are fearful of Cuban fiber just because the price tag and people always say that, you know, it's not durable. Cuban fiber is really, really durable. It just abrases easily. And when I say abrasing, I mean, you can't drag it down the trail you know, with rocks on the trail, that, that kind of uh, durability. But either one, uh, keep in mind though, the Arc Hall will have a little bit better durability, a little less waterproofness, 
but, and it only weighs three ounces more. So just keep that in mind. Traveling to Georgia in mid-August, any must-do hikes in the area? I have never hiked in Georgia, but um, there are a ton of hikes down there. There's a Georgia Loop, uh, you know, AT starts there. I'm sure you could find something. Sorry, I can offer more information. Maybe somebody can chime in. Do you ever see yourself mountaineering? Um, I don't know. Not right now. I can't see myself doing that right now. Uh, so you had some IT band issues. What are some good stretches you'd recommend? Um, let me come back to that and I'm actually going to post in the chat. I'm happy I can make it frozen. I'm super excited to head down the Red River Gorge next week. Thanks for helping me learn about it. My pleasure. <clears throat> okay, so Nathan, I'm going to put a link in the chat. And this is the rehab routine that I do. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, there we go. Check that video out. It should have stretches and exercises to actually help you build up the muscles around the IT band. Don't use a foam roller. Um, anybody, any video that you watch saying to use a foam roller, they don't know what they're talking about. Just my advice from what I've learned. Okay, let's see. Let's try to get through these questions. I'm probably really behind now. I've just been going off on tangents. I don't know why. Uh, yes, Charlotte. Hey, welcome. Wow, it's late for you. Uh, wow, it's really late. Okay, trying to stay awake. Do you remember my question about lone loneliness and solitude? Yeah, and I have to look that back up. I was going to get to it. I was just about ready to pull it back up, but I can't remember where you posted it. So as far as being lonely at a camp or seeking solitude, I, I don't mind. I think this came up at the, you know, at the beginning of the chat, but I don't really get lonely when I'm out there. I get bored sometimes, but then I, you know, I just bring a pair of headphones and listen to an audiobook or listen to some music or a podcast or with Netflix, you can actually download certain episodes to your phone. And I know it's not, you know, really roughing it out there, but you can watch it on your phone you know, the movies, whatever you download, and that kind of takes your mind off. And usually I just want to go to bed when I camp anyway, when I get to camp anyway. So hopefully that answers your question. If you want me to go a little bit more in depth, Charlotte, go ahead and ask that question again and I'll get right back to it. And thank you for bringing it back up. I was trying to find it before this chat, but I could not. I like summer camping, much less gear to bring. Yes, tell me about it. And hopefully the snow stops. And rain, it's been raining like crazy here too. Just wanted to say, love your videos, man, and keep it up. Thanks, Spoon Man. Appreciate that. What are my thoughts on John Z? Are you talking about the John Z from, yeah, you're probably talking about John. John Z made, uh, he's one of the creators of the Palanti Simple Pack. Um, he's amazing. Uh, and I would just found out about him a couple months ago. Uh, he actually has a YouTube channel, and his base weight is insane. It kind of makes me jealous, but I don't think I'll ever be able to get that low. Ian Fry, okay, only the 50 degree Phoenix has sewn baffles. The 40, only the 50, the, only the, 40, the 40 degree does not. Okay, huh, interesting. I wonder where that little thing is. And when I say baffles, I might be saying the wrong word. I'm talking about a place where you can actually push the down into a different tube. I wish I had my backpack undone right now and I could show you. But um, maybe we'll get that into that in another video. Jeremy, just finished the Black Forest Trail. It was a beast. Yeah, man. Wasn't it fun, though? I bet you had a blast. Hey, at least you did it before the rattlesnakes came out. I don't know why they don't use reflective paints as trail as trail marker. Yeah, I'm assuming re reflective paint probably costs a little bit more too, though. Um, Mark Bayless asks, am I planning to section hike any of the AT with Gary? Um, it could be. I, I got to find time, you know, before <laughs> I get all these trips. Um, 
I was trying to probably, you know, go on with a trip. Excuse me, I can't talk. I was trying to go with him on a trip at some point this April, and then I got called in for jury duty and had to shuffle a whole bunch of trips around. So we'll see if it happens. I'm gonna try. I'm sure as heck gonna try. My only worry is he's so conditioned right now. He's gonna be doing way higher mileage and way faster mileage, and I don't want to slow him down. I just want him to keep going. So we shall see though. There's some trails in Indiana. Cool. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Hike with Mike. When I hike, I always go the way so that most interesting features are at the end of your hike, so you have something to look forward to most of the hike. That's exactly it. I agree with that. Uh, am I ever going? To, am I ever going to hike west of the Mississippi River? Uh, yes, there's a very, very slim possibility that it might happen this year, but I might save it for next year. We'll have to see. I'm waiting for really, really big news from work, and I can't tell work yet until May. But I'm really, really hoping that I have big news for you guys come June. So <clears throat> it will happen. Just not sure when. I still have a ton of trails that have been recommended to me on the East Coast. Thing about checking out the AEP Energy Reclaimed Land is something that looks interesting. Huh, never heard of that. What are your thoughts on moleskin and have you ever used it? Um, I used to bring moleskin. Uh, as my feet toughened up, um, I just took it out of my pack. I never bring it anymore. If I really need some kind of moleskin, for a blister, I end up just putting duct tape or lyco tape on it, leuco tape, however you say it, and that's been working out fine for me. Uh, as far as blisters, the key to blisters is drying out your feet, and I know I've talked about this in several videos. And, and I'm, when I say key to, to blisters, I mean, I mean for me, this is just what I've found. It might not be doing it right, but it's never given me a problem if I air my feet out at lunch and at night before I slip my foot back in a sock, I don't get blisters. Um, <clears throat> once your feet condition and you can condition them by, you know, walking outside in your bare feet, say, if you have a dog, great, walk them in your bare feet, you know, go around your house in your bare feet, you know, don't cut the grass in your bare feet, obviously, but, you know, try to be in bare feet as much as possible. I know I work out in bare feet and that's how you prevent blisters. For me, I, though, if I do end up getting a blister, I pop it as soon as I can and I let it drain. You know, I squeeze out all that liquid and let it drain and then put some Neosporin on it. Devil's Path and the Catskills, 24 miles, summits. <laughs> yeah, I will be up there. Um, I don't know how close I'm getting to the Catskills, but we will have to see. I will write that down though. Thank you very much, Twiz. Twiz? T-Wiz? <laughs> All right, so you got Gary's YouTube channel. Uh, let's see. I can let you guys know when Gary's in PA. That's fine. <laughs> oh, Lisa. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, okay, new episode, yes, okay. Uh, have you ever thought about doing any sections of the Mid-State Trail? I have not, and honestly, I'm not sure even where that is. But I will write it down and add it to the list of many, many trails. Uh, a couple trails I do want to tackle that have been recommended to me countless times is the Kahana and the Loyal Sock Trail. Those trails will get done this year, I promise. You heard it here first. Uh, Ready Player One book is better, yes. The movie definitely let me down. You know what? It was still a good screen adaptation. I just... I like the book way better. I did the dolly says we saw a family with small trail. Okay, Ian's chiming in on the children. Hey Frozen, I've been MN nice. Hey Frozen, I've been watching your videos for a while now. I compiled a budget camping wish list for this summer, but I was wondering if you had any good starter one person tent packs for a first time or uh, see the problem with Okay, you didn't 
Yeah, you mentioned budget. See, I would not skimp on a tent or pack. If you really need to skimp on a tent or a pack, try to borrow it from a friend or rent it maybe, as lame as that sounds. I know REI at least used to have a program where you could do that. But the reason I'm saying this is you actually end up spending more money if you skimp now and actually end up really, really enjoying camping and hiking because you'll just buy something better to replace that. So you spend not only what you would have spent, but you spent money on something you're not gonna use. And I did that countless times. I can probably outfit two to three people fully with camping gear. Now I'm working on selling that camping gear off, but trust me, and I know a lot of hikers will tell you the same thing, try not to skimp on the pack and the tent. Yes, the Pemi Loop is this year. I promise on that one too, it is on the list. I do not know anyone that uses the Granite Gear, Gear Crown 2, so I can't comment, Edwin, uh, but hopefully someone in the chat might be able to. Hamster King, switch to Arc Zip or stay with current pack? Thoughts on the design? <clears throat> I personally would, would get an Arc Hall or Arc Blast. I don't really like the Arc Zip. Uh, you lose the mesh pocket, which I guess is okay, but yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't, it, it feels more like luggage at that point. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are some people, I know, I think Bigfoot has one now. Actually, I'm sure Bigfoot has one. I think I just saw a video of it. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. As far as the design, I'm not sold on that, on the Arc Zip. And I'm not sure what current pack you have. Um, if you're coming with an Osprey Exos, it, you know, it just depends. I, I think, uh, you know, Tim mentioned this before, Tim Watson. He, he went back to the Exos for a trip, and I did the same thing. I just put it on just to see what it would feel like. And I, I can't wear it anymore. I, I, it's amazing how well the Arc Hall rides on my shoulders with the gear that I have these days. So hopefully that answers your question, Hamster King. Okay, so here's, here's a con, uh, contrasting uh, a view on budget gear. So Brian says he did complete budget gear to start with and not disappointed. Okay, well, that's good to know. So maybe, maybe it's just me. I don't know. I just know I spent a ton of money on gear and it just sits in my basement now. <clears throat> Meerkat, did they help you? Did they help you a lot? <laughs> I'm starting a section of the 18 in two weeks. Amicalo Falls and Springer. Awesome, K Matt. Good luck with that. <laughs> You're welcome, Jacob. Try to do that routine. <clears throat> I think you're the one that asked. Sorry, there's a lot of people in here. Uh, 113, actually, to be precise. Um, do that routine at least twice a week, and after a couple months, you shouldn't have any issues, it's crazy. We're trying to do a collab with some local guys, should be fun, awesome. I need to check that out. All right, I am reading everybody's comments, I'm just making sure that I'm not missing anything. Oh, cool. You have to tell me about the border outro. Douglas, will you um, post on whatever video you want? And I'm going to read about your border route trail experience because we did a section of the border route trail going up to uh, the Superior Hiking Trail. And we heard from a lot of people, some a lot of locals in the area that they did some of that trail and it was really hard to follow. So be careful. But I'm curious to how the experience goes with you. Morrison was a lot of fun. We had a great time there. Do I plan on doing the picture, pictured rocks trail in, upper, in the upper peninsula of Michigan? Did that last year and was the best so far. Um, I'm going to make, the, make it up there. Um, probably not this year. I am really, really trying to save money. And, uh, you know, I don't want to 
you know, have to get the hotel stay and all that other stuff with all the other trips that I'm going on. So I'm going to do some trips on the East Coast and maybe that'll be the big trip for next, next year. We'll see. There's a lot of up in the air things right now, but we should, we definitely will see. I love my Cuban tarp with doors and for the money you pay for it. You really want to get the most out of it. Any other tarps you have interest in? I have my eye on the war bonnet Thunderfly. Thunderfly. Um, I have been completely satisfied with my hammock gear DCF tarp. It's been amazing. I'm so happy that I got it with the doors. I deploy them a lot more than I thought I would, especially, you know, in the non summer months where, you know, there's wind, there's rain, there's snow. It's just, it's a great tarp. I absolutely love it. If I was going to try another tarp though, I would definitely go back to war bonnet and look at the Tim had it. Tim Watson had it. It's called the Mini Fly, I believe. And it has little mini doors coming down to stop sideways rain from getting in. And I thought that was a really cool design. Yeah, Bryce, I have heard, not heard, but in my experience with the foam roller, it usually solves the immediate issue, but it always comes back, you know, the next trip. So what I'm saying is the foam roller will work to stop that pain. But if you keep doing the foam roller every day, I don't feel like I'm fixing the problem. Now with the link that I posted for, I can't remember his name. I'm terrible with names. My God, the ITB rehab routine, it actually tightens or not tightens, strengthens the muscles that connect to that band. So they're operating with the same level of intensity. The, from what I've read and what from, from what physical therapists have told me, because I've done physical therapy twice now for it, which is insane. Um, <clears throat> the one time I couldn't even walk, but the way they were describing it is it's a muscle imbalance. So it's a, it's either the glutes, the muscle that attaches from the glutes to the IT band or the other one, I, the, I can't remember the name. One of those muscles is weaker. And so I wish I had a rubber band up here to show you, but it's pulling, it's pulling the, the one, the, the side of the tendon up higher than the other side. And when that muscle is strengthened, those muscles are working together. So yes, the, the foam roller helps ease the pain after it's happened, but to get it to, get it to where you don't have the problem at all, you have to exercise the muscles around it. At least that's what, in my experience, is helping me. How much of a first aid kit do you carry and have you used it on the trail? Um, I carry a very minimal first aid kit and you can actually see all the contents of my first aid kit in my 2017 ultralight backpacking video, I go in depth and show you everything. I take everything out, including the safety pin that I bring for blisters. Um, now, I haven't had to use much of it. Um, thankfully, you know, I'm very blessed with not having to have to use that. But, you know, I feel I have what I need and people need to bring what they need. Everybody's different. You need to bring your first aid, anything in your first aid kit you have to feel comfortable with. So if you want, check out that 2018, 2017 ultralight backpacking gear list and uh, it'll, you'll, you'll see the first aid kit. Um, Kevin, yes, I have done the whole blister and strength thing. Did not work for me. Um, maybe I didn't pop the hole big enough or maybe I had a smaller safety pin. I like to pop it with a safety pin because they're easy to clean and they don't take up any pack space. Uh, so I popped this blister. I left it in overnight. Now, granted, it was in a sock, but I still had that fluid in my foot. So I don't think it works or I did something wrong. Uh, but what I do is I pop the blister and I squeeze the liquid out, put some Neosporin on it, and then throw it in a sock, a breathable sock. So that's just what I do. But other people have said they use the string, so maybe I'm just doing it wrong. Greenback Monkey. About to be hiking the Great Eastern Trail and then connecting over the AT, heading Sobo from the halfway point to Springer. Any suggestions on keeping your feet dry? Yeah, I was just talking about this. Um, try to air out your feet at lunch. 
you know, at lunch, at night, in the morning. Keep your feet as dry as possible. Um, what I really like on long distance trails, Superior Hiking Trail, for instance, I bring three pairs of socks. I don't care. They're worth the four ounces or three ounces, whatever it is. Uh, you know, wear two, wash one. That's a, I, I love that little theory, and it's worked great for me on the trail. So try that. Hopefully that works for you as well. Great bids, and check out the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Park in Manitou Island, Michigan. I mean, we're going to have to do a Michigan trip. Definitely going to have to do that. All right, take a look. See you later, Ian. Uh, Grumpy, I will, uh, I will email you where he is. I, I don't even know right now. Um, he has a little view ranger beacon, which I'm not sharing. He asked me not to share it, uh, but I'll find out where he, where he is for you. Oh, well, how do I stay motivated on a bad hiking day? Because I really feel that, feel that I need to do this, but anxiety makes me question the trip. You know, I've had those days, Charlotte, and thank you for posting that. Hopefully you're asleep now and maybe we'll watch the archive of this video. Um, <clears throat> I have had days where, man, it's just raining, it's just pouring. My feet hurt. I'm tired of my feet being wet. Uh, you know, my knees probably acting up. I'm hungry. I'm cold. And then I realized I could be sitting in an office <laughs> doing work, but instead I'm outside and having an adventure. And that really, really keeps me motivated. Another thing you could try is pop in your headphone and just listen to music or an audiobook or whatever, something to take your mind off the trail. So that's just what I do. Totally agreed, Hiking Shijano. Do you have a link where you are selling old gear? I'll be selling it on the Facebook Marketplace. I heard that was pretty good to sell it. Uh, right now, I don't have any gear up. It's just, I wanna wait till it gets warm so I can actually take pictures of it outside. Have you hiked the Great Eastern Trail in PA? Never even heard about this. Passes through Jack's Mountain and the Thousand Steps and Standing Stone Trail. I will write that down. I've never even heard of it. Thanks, Doug. What am I hitting the loyal sock? Um, no idea. It, the Pemi loop needs to happen um, first, probably. And then it's either going to be the Kahana or the loyal sock. Uh, so we will get to that. Um, remember, we're trying to do these these uh, live Q and A's at the beginning of every month. So we'll, I'll have updates for you on where I'm going. Just bought my mini fly two, two months ago, two minutes ago, saving a pound for my old tarp. Nice. Am I a Steelers fan? Eh, I don't really like football. I'll root for them. I'll watch them, but I'm not, you know, a diehard Steelers fan. I'm more of a Penguins fan. Uh, would I ever consider carrying a chair as in the REI Flexlight or Helinox? Now, uh, chairs just aren't my style. I don't know. I'm just not a big chair guy. The, uh, there's this place called lightsmith.com that I've really, really been spending a lot of time at. They make this thing right here. It's called a Quickback UL chair. And it weighs 2.65 ounces, and it makes use of your sit pad. So if I was going to get a chair, that's probably what I'd do. I like sitting on a log with my sit pad. I don't know. Um, just with my base weight being 9 point whatever it is now, I can't see adding another 10, 11 ounces for just sitting on when I could just sit in my hammock. I don't know. It's not my thing, though. I, okay, I agree. Foam rolling feels more like a temporary fix. But man, it feels good after. Oh, it definitely feels good. Definitely feels good, Bryce. And you have a good night, man. I have a flex light only take it on shorter shorter trips. Wait, I'm tempting. Yeah. Hey, eh. <laughs> we'll meet. I'll meet up with you up trail. Don't worry. 
When I do pictured rocks, I'll, I'll make you come with me. Do I have a favorite ritual after completing a trail, like a favorite meal? <laughs> I'm probably the lamest person because I don't know. I just, I, dude, honestly, I either crave Arby's, uh, a, you know, a, a number, what do they change their numbers? A number three, whatever it is now, roast beef or a Wendy's, number six. <laughs> so I, I'm the lamest person. Everybody tells me that, man, you should, you should go local and check out these places. I never do it. I'm just in a hurry to get back home and, you know, get work done. So I just end up craving Wendy's. I don't know why. I have no idea why. But that's my ritual. I'm going to do a little dance. But that'd be it. <laughs> Lucas George. Frozen, once you do the AT, because I know you will, you should really try it. You should really try and do it with a hammock. Plan it out. A hammock AT hiker would be some very original content on that through hike. Yes, if I do the AT, Lucas, I will be in a hammock the entire way, except for the Smokies, which you are required to stay in a shelter. And I might just stroll into the shelters very late and so I can set up with the hammock anyway. <clears throat> yeah, CC Coder, I did watch that. I did, I did watch that. Um, it was very, pretty interesting, but it, I think it went back to the same foam rolling techniques. I'm really enjoying the the uh, ITB rehab routine, though. Why did that link not work? Uh, that's weird. Let me uh, let me fix that while I answer some more questions here. Does that link work? No. Huh. Anyway, go to lightsmith.com and search for chair. It'll come right up. I guess it won't let me. Uh, I guess it won't let me type URLs or something. Who knows? Unless it's a YouTube. Gotta hit the sack. Big day. All right. Good night, Outland. Um, the hatchling is that weird hammock seat thing. No, I haven't looked at it. I know Spagiver uses it a lot, but I don't know. I just I can't see carrying around that extra stuff. No, Adam. Syntax did not respond to my tag. So that's a shame. I really wanted to see what his gear was. Charlotte Daru, thank you so much for answering. You are so welcome. Your video gave me the courage to try to hike the trail. How and when did you get into hiking? After this, I'll go to sleep. Wow. Okay, so I got into hiking. Uh, my when, when I got into hiking, it was New Year's, and my buddy, you know, texted me Happy New Year, and he's like, "Dude, I need to get back into hiking because he was in Scouts." I had been car camping once or twice, didn't really like it at all. Uh, I always liked going out in the woods and playing around as a kid. But, you know, I said, you know what, I'll go, I'll go camping with you. We'll see how it goes. So my first trip was in zero degree Fahrenheit weather. And it was absolutely the best experience in, in the world. Uh, that's minus 17 Celsius, minus, almost minus 18 Celsius. So it was a very, very big learning experience for me, and I had a blast, and ever since then, I've been hooked. I have not done any hikes in Canada. I would like to. It's on the bucket list. I'm not sure when it's going to happen, though. How many miles, here's a good, here's a good question. How many miles would you recommend for a first time trail? Honestly, I would start out as a day hike, do whatever you're comfortable with. No more than six miles is what I recommend. Um, after that, bump it up to 10, then 12. And you know, as you get comfortable, stay at 15 for a while. Cause that seemed to be something that I got. It was like a wall that I hit. I couldn't go any more than 15 miles until one day I did 18. Um, but yeah, I think the first time you hike, probably six miles, especially if you have a pack on, because it is a lot harder than you expect it to be, trust me. I think when I first went out in the winter, I weighed like 45 pounds uh, in my backpack, and it was, it was an eye-opener of how hard it was and how unconditioned I was. Frozen, do you know about the decathlon 
hiking gear. I wanted to know what, Frozen, do you know about Decathlon's hiking gear? I wanted to know what you think of them. They seem very heavy, basic starter equipment in general. I've not even heard of them, but I'll check it out. Huh. CC Coder, two games left, ready for another Penn's Cup run. Yep, I'm ready for a three-peat. Can't wait. All things outdoors, good night. Hey Frozen, would you ever do some kind of meetup in the area or overnight? Just starting to get into the things, into things around our area. Uh, yes, uh, it will be announced very soon, but we're going to keep it to Facebook only. So if you would like to have a meetup, if you would like to be a part of that, sign up on or follow my page on Facebook and we will do a private video for Facebook only people. The reason is we're keeping it safe. Um, I don't want some crazy people coming into camp. I'm sure a lot of people will be carrying at that point anyway, but still, I'd rather not people get shot. You know, just want to keep everything safe and quiet. So, yes, there is a meetup planned. I uh, haven't announced it officially, but we will soon. If you had a free vacation to any destination, where would it be? It would be New Zealand. Hands down, New Zealand. Okay, and after Bobby and uh, we're going to call it a night. Running a little bit past the time. How did you take, how long did it take to get comfortable to do your business in the woods? Do you know people who won't get comfortable but still like hiking? Uh, you know what? Third time that I pooped in the woods, it was like normal. It's a lot more normal than you think, especially if you bring toilet paper. Uh, my biggest advice is to take baby wipes or wet ones. Make sure you pack them out and do not leave them there or bury them or burn them. Pack them out. They make it just so much better. How did I get my trail name? We talked about this in the probably the first chat, but what had happened is, and it's not even a trail name, it's just a name that I've been going by since high school. So I was in chorus class, and for whatever reason, we massaged... Um, each other, like shoulder massage, to warm up our vocal cords. I don't know. So girls paired with guys, guys paired with girls. So you had girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy. Anyway, the girl behind me bumped me and my hand slipped down her shirt and I felt a little something. And instead of getting mad, she just turned around and said out loud, holy crap, you're frozen. Kind of lame, but... It's stuck. I've been going by that ever since. Okay, guys. Thank you for joining me. By the and just again, if you want to be notified on new videos, all you got to do is click the subscribe button and the bell, and that will let you know when I go live. It'll also let you know whenever I post on the community, which will tell you when the next live session is going to be. So guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I had a blast. We're gonna plan this next one for, let's say the 1st of May, tentatively the 1st of May. I wanna thank everyone for joining me. It's always a blast talking about hiking, camping, backpacking, gear, and I love sharing it with the community. So if you have any questions for next time, and you know you're not gonna make it, or you think you're not gonna make it, you can comment below in this chat and ask the questions and I will review them whenever it becomes time to do another, another, another live Q and A. So anyway, guys, everyone have a good night, be safe. And remember the next trip video drops tomorrow at 8 PM. Thanks everybody. Find time and go on your own adventure.